Hi guys and welcome back to Interview Madness. Welcome to day nine. It's crazy to think that we're already on day nine and if you are enjoying the series, if you're watching it every day, please leave a comment down below. Please give me a little bit of feedback so I know that you guys are enjoying it because I'm putting a lot of work into it and realistically these videos, these videos are less seen than the other videos on my channel so I'm just trying to make sure that the work that I'm putting in is useful to you guys. So now that that's out of the way, we're going to continue with the same theme of questions today. Um, and the theme is again, knowledge of medical school question. And today's question, I'm just gonna put the computer here because I don't have the answer in my head. <laughs> today's question is, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of a PBL course? So like the previous eight days, pause the video, jot down a few ideas about what you think would be the advantages and disadvantages of PBL, and then we'll regroup in just a second. So as usual, we're going to start with the purpose of this question. And this question is a question that's going to be asked to you realistically only if you're applying to PBL schools. And it's there for the interviewers to make sure that you understand that a PBL course is vastly, vastly different from a lecture based course or an integrated course. It's quite different. It's completely a different way of learning. And interviewers want to make sure that you're aware of that, but that also you'll be a good candidate and you will respond well to this way of learning. So now if we move on to how you would actually answer this question. I think the most important thing first is to start by a basis definition of PBL. So if it says PBL in the question, you would have to say what the acronym stands for. So you would say something like um, PBL stands for problem-based learning and it's an approach to teaching that some medical schools in the UK or in other countries use to um, teach their students. It's an approach that is quite different from a lecture-based course and it differs in that the emphasis is put on small group teaching. Students are put in small groups and every single week um, there will be a case with a theme to it so it can be asthma for example and then students on the open on the opening day of the case, we'll go through the case, make some key questions to answer all of the physiology, pathology, um, pharmacology that is relevant to that case. And then during the week, there will be supporting lectures, supporting activities, and a lot of individual study that students will have to attend or do on their own before coming back for the closing session in which students will then discuss and answer the questions as a group and that would be the end of the week and if students feel that maybe they haven't done enough or they have done too much they can then during the weekend um, fine-tune what they have learned just to make sure that they're up to standards so that would be like sort of quite encompassing definition of PBL and then you would move on to being like uh, talking about the advantages and the disadvantages of PBL. So it'd be like, the question asks me to answer, to talk about the advantages and disadvantages, because obviously every single system has some advantages and some drawbacks. So let's talk about the advantages first. And then you would list some advantages and try to flesh out a little bit what each advantage means and why it's an advantage. So rem I remember here that I had written like, five different advantages, so I'm just going to list them now and maybe just develop one. So the first one, you will have early clinical clinical contact, then you have the development of long-term retention, so I'm going to develop this one. So it would be like NMPBL, you also have the advantage that you develop long-term retention. Indeed, the fact that you are doing the work mostly on your own uh, during the week and then you come back with a group of people that you have to talk about the questions, exchange, you can ask each other the questions, it really allows for you to retain the information much better. For instance, if I do a mistake in PBL and I, tr and I want to answer a question but my question and answer is completely, completely wrong. And my fellow classmate, let's say James, tells me that, oh, actually, I didn't find that and I found this. And everybody else in the group will be like, yeah, I also find the same thing as James. It will allow me to be, to remember that sort of anecdote and remember that what I thought initially was wrong and that the correct answer is this. So it allows me to associate um, content to real life events that happened. And that really aids in long-term retention. The fact as well that you're doing this as a group, that you are having to only come to PBL close with one sheet of paper and having to recall the information every single week forces you to, to some degree, learn a lot of information every single week. So that would be how I would develop one of them. The other few advantages that I have that I'm just going to list now and then you can flesh out if you want to use the same would be improving teamwork and interpersonal, interpersonal skills. Uh, it will be improving presentation skills as well and then finding your own answers when you're faced with a problem. So this, what I mean by that is that if 
later on in clinical years when there's less guided teaching. You already know how to learn on your own. You already know which websites to go to or how to find questions and learn content on your own. So then I would tie all of that being like all of these important skills that are really good advantages of PBL are really important in the hospital setting. And I think that's why PBL is a really valuable system. And then you would be like, however, there's also disadvantages to every single system. So then you would list the disadvantages. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to develop one of them. So the first one was like less didactic teaching. And so a student will require a lot of commitment and dedication to self-directed learning to be able to gain adequate knowledge. So I'm going to develop this one. So it'd be like, since in PBL there's less didactic teaching, it's less spoon-fed, it's quite difficult for students sometimes to gauge the depth that you need to go to, to fully figure out how much you need to learn, what is useful what is not useful, what is really important, key content and high yield and what is a bit less. So it's a th sometimes a bit difficult to figure that out and it takes time, it takes practice and it requires a lot of commitment on the side of the student to really be committed to learning, committed to improving and not everybody is made for PBL and if that's something that is really difficult for students to do maybe PBL will not be for them. And if they find themselves in a PBL course, they might struggle a lot more than if they were in a lecture-based course, something like that. And then the other three disadvantages that I have here are potentially poor results on tests, um, because sometimes you might not have enough, the full breadth of knowledge, you're only doing cases. Preparation takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of effort. And then sometimes the group discussions are inadequate, so you feel like it's a bit useless. And then you would close that off by feeling, but overall, I really do think that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages for PBL teaching. And that's why I applied to this medical school, because I really, really am keen to following this approach to learning. And so that would be the end of your answer. So I hope that this was useful. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you guys tomorrow for day 10. Bye!